The somewhat newly discovered space amoebas are under the voice's microscope. Multiple colonies are underway, and maybe we can actually improve energy production as we get underway here. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Federations in our Symphony of the Star series. One thing I noticed as I started this recording, or got ready to start this recording, rather, is something kind of cool about the Nalzaroth system, or the Wrath system. Nalzaroth is our homeworld. Notice that we are a binary system, but the secondary star is a brown dwarf. It might look like a gas giant. It's not a gas giant. It's a star. And I just, it's not that I've never seen this in Stellaris before, but I just wanted to take a moment to appreciate the accuracy of some of the astronomical phenomena that can occur in Stellaris. And I think it's really cool. I can't remember the last time I started a series where we had a binary star system as the home system where the secondary star was a brown dwarf. I just love that. I think it's really cool. So wanted to point that out as I got started. So we still have a bit of an annoying energy shortage, which as a hive mind is not the most uncommon thing in the world. We do have some additional colonies underway and we can build another station that could potentially help produce some energy. So I have some solutions in mind and we may as well, to tell you the truth, we may as well go ahead and start with that. We right now do not have... What type of planet is this? It's a savanna world? See, eventually we're going to want to control that. So why don't I make Heka a starbase? And this is going to be a pure energy production type of Our station. Construction is complete. That's the plan. And that will hopefully offset some of the shortage that we're currently seeing. The shortage should be gone before long, but just want to continue to do what I can in that direction. So it's a little bit less obnoxious than it has been. One thing that's been pointed out, and this is a very good point, is that it is possible in the early game when you have this kind of a situation, whether playing as a hive mind or not, it is possible to just go ahead and build all the stations, particularly the mining stations, not necessarily the research stations when you have this situation that we've been in. Oh look, Xeris has six energy there, that's handy. And then you can sell Technology the conceived. excess minerals in a way that actually makes up for the lost cost in maintenance of the minerals mining stations. So cost to benefit ratio does actually allow for that, which is good to know. Mining station output has been increased by 10%. We could do it by another 10%. We can increase mineral output. I think I just want to improve the mining station output by another 10%, because again, that's going to affect all of our mining stations. So I think that applies to more than just, well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I've always thought of that as, hang on, hang on. Now I want to check myself. Where do we have an energy station? Let's look. Okay, okay. It's a mining station that's collecting energy. All right, so what I said last episode was accurate. I was just making sure, because these games... The funny thing about whether you're playing these on YouTube or not, Paradox games change complete. constantly, don't they? And so there have been so many times when I've recorded a series, sometimes, and I'm, I try to very readily admit this, sometimes I just haven't played the game a lot recently when I started a new series, so it's like, oh man, I, I mean, I can read the patch notes and maybe practice a little bit, but there's so much I'm out of practice with. But in this case, you know, it's even when I'm more practiced and I've been playing it more, sometimes I just look at a mechanic and I think about it for a second, I'm like, wait, have I been under a misapprehension all this time? Am I looking at this wrong? Could it actually mean something else? Might they have changed something? You know, it's just an interesting aspect of playing these, these games. The wreckage of what must have been a major First League naval base has been detected in orbit around Heka 3. So we have this science ship, remember, that is now looking at... Oh, it's interesting. Look, if I zoom in, the star disappears. <laughs> uh, amusement. It, the whole thing has to be on the screen for the effect to appear. That's kind of funny. Watch, watch, watch. Anyway, we now know that the League maintained a massive fleet called the Grand Navy to combat piracy and safeguard member nations from external aggressors, this particular outpost appears to have provided berthing for one of their Rimward Patrol fleets. Remarks. So, I'm going to go ahead and have the science ship research that. So that's our very first precursor artifact. Been a little bit behind on that because I've been waiting for our science ships to level up. Hey, Nalzaroth is ready for a new building type. So, let's see what we can do here. We are good on minerals and food. You know, you know what we're not good on? 
Energy. Let's make sure we don't hit that bottom mark. Now that actually took away my ability to build anything. So maybe we'll just wait for it to build back up. We are still short on housing, but at this point, a mining district would solve that problem. So should I do what I've done a lot in Final Federation 2 and... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I will potentially just build, or I could build... Yeah. okay. We'll just wait for some minerals to build up and then we'll make that, that decision then. Now we are almost at a point, we, we had 500 food there, but we, we need to keep our energy situation solved. So we need to get 500 food in order to start additional colonies. We do have this archaeological site under excavation here. And then lots more orders for you. Holy crap, that's a lot of orders. Why is that so many orders? 55 orders. That... I guess, technically, oh, okay. I've queued up orders that have already been surveyed by someone else, so those orders are all going to disappear as soon as this top item on their order queue is finished. Really? A colossal impact crater hints that something big collided with the surface of this planet once. Which planet? Toybos 3. So that's up here where we were just looking. Uh, look at it, please. That's an easy anomaly. Anything that might give me a little bit more in the way of resources would be nice right now. Please and thanks. An archaeological site in our empire has been fully surveyed. Oh, nice. Governor Motel Organ 76 has developed new skills. So he has gained the environmental engineer trait, which means clearing blockers is cheaper. That's quite handy, especially on Nazaroth. So this archaeological site is done. The final days, from what can be pieced together, excuse me, it appears that the resupply freighter collided with the asteroid due to a thruster malfunction. The resulting explosion damaged the blast doors and destroyed the asteroid's sus subspace transmitter, permanently severing all contact with the outside world. Trapped and with no hope of rescue, the asteroid's inhabitants slowly succumbed to starvation or suicide. The last logs of their single surviving subspace receiver confirmed that their empire, suddenly bereft of its capital, descended into civil war and anarchy. Alright, we got some minor artifacts, and that's it. Now, question is, since we now have minor artifacts, I don't know why I always struggle to find that. Can we sell them? No, we can't. Because we're hive mind. I can do that. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. I didn't mean to click that. I didn't mean to click that. I just wanted to look at it. I wanted to see the tooltip, but the tooltip came up on its own. Okay, well, I'll live with it. It's okay. We'll find more of those. And again, because of the type of game we're playing in, that's not the worst mistake. So, construction is complete. we have another Elgate inside now. A little bit ahead of the curve there. Our special project is complete. Okay. Our archaeological mission to the First League naval base has concluded. We recovered the emblem of the 28th Outer Rim Patrol Fleet, a mid-sized task force charged with the defense of trade routes leading to League-associated nations along the Galactic Rim. The base orbiting Heka 3 was apparently their home port. An interesting find. Now, the Heka station definitely needs solar panel networks, and only solar panel networks. Um, I may also do a hydroponics bay, but for now, I don't want to build anything that will take away energy. I want to add to my energy, please, and thanks. Okay. We are at a point where we can add another system. Sigma Draconis, I think, is the obvious candidate. So we'll go ahead and add that starbase. We also need to add Xeris, but we need to add Mira before we do that. A massive crater on Toybos 3 appears to be the result of a collision with a starship. From the size of the crater, we suspect that a ship exited a hyperlane at maximum velocity, rammed the planet, or ramming the planet for reasons unknown roughly 10,000 years ago. The Searcher Unit 3 has picked up residual subspace echoes near the crash site, reminiscent of a collapsed hyperparticulate field, but as the ship itself disintegrated on impact, the theory cannot be verified. Remarkable. All right, so we got some physics research for that, which will help us along the way to research station output boost. We are almost done, 10 months away from the Space Amoeba study, which we queued up at the end of the last episode, in case you missed that. All right, solar panel networks are going up at the Heka station. We still have room for one more station on top of the ones we already have. Yeah, I think our energy situation is going to be resolved before long. I do. I'm going to wait for a few more minerals to build up. But once it's resolved, we will be able to really increase our mineral income quite nicely. 
It'll be interesting in a way because what's going to happen is that as soon as we hit surplus, we will use that to build another mineral station, which will then, of course, reduce our surplus. By chance, we stumbled upon a faint alien signal during the survey of this planet. The source appears to be a small object in orbit. The signal contains no message. Could it be a distress transponder? Let's have a look. So Toibos has a few anomalies so far. All right, we are 15 days away from the first solar panel finishing on that station. That's quite handy. Done. All right, so... Okay, that helped us by three, which is <laughs> exactly how much I expected it to help us. Good. Are you done? You're done. Uh, you should be looking at that anomaly, please. Oh, there's another science ship there. Okay, we'll survey and then tell you what, just go on auto explore because it's time. There are some anomalies that a level, well, hmm. Yeah, there are. By the way, this system is not actually connected with this hyperlate. Remember how I was confused about, and I appreciate the commentary point of this out because you really can't tell even when you zoom in. Look, I'm moving the camera and it's still looks like it's on that hyperlane, but you can tell it's off just a little bit. And when you actually go into Seoul, there's only one exit, and that's to, to the Alvira system right here. That's why there was weirdness. So, can't remember the last time that a system was placed that perfectly on a hyperlane, but wasn't actually connected to it. So, sharp eyes. Can't remember who that was that pointed that out, but thanks for that. The mummified remains of a single... We've gotten some nice boost to physics and society research, and maybe even a little bit of engineering, too. Individual belonging to a previously unknown mammalian species have been found drifting in high orbit over Toibos 2. The being is dressed in what appears to be a flight suit complete with a helmet and maybe a fighter pilot that ejected in some ancient battle only to be forgotten and left behind. Our study of the corpse has provided some interesting data. A tragic fate. Okay, so Motile Organ 1 has gained some expertise in propulsion. Our construction is complete. That being done, that's a pretty huge step. Let's go ahead and build a couple of mining stations. Looks like there are uh, three conceived. different mining stations. Research station output has been improved. Oh, hey, we can research moat harvesting traps. We can also increase the amount of energy credits we get from technicians. Oh, that's so mean. See, I really want moats, but I want energy credits from technicians more. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, we use some of our minerals that we were waiting on in Nalzaroth. Space amoebas forever. The space amoeba is usually accompanied by a handful of semi-independent flagella used for defense and object manipulation. The amoeba and its flagella do not share a mind, the former instead using RNA-based secretions to program the latter for the execution of tasks of middling complexity. So we can gain the flagellating movement modifier, giving us evasion plus 5% for every ship in our empire, or we can retrieve some tissue samples, which gives us regenerative hull tissue. Ooh. Ooh. I like regenerative hull tissue, and a lot of progress towards that particular project as well. Yay. How many blockers do we have on these worlds? How many blockers do we have that, can we, that we can actually clear, is the question. We still have a ruined arcology. Oh yeah, this is the one on the, the colony that we founded. God, I love the origins and the way that they change the way the game plays out. Hmm... Yeah, I'm not going to do that just yet, because I, I want I do want to build something on Nalzoroth. Okay, let's go ahead and go up to speed three, shall we? I want to move you here. So those are being built. Looks like the other energy station in Heka is done. I'm not going to build anything else because I, just, I don't want to yet starting to find some systems that have some more energy, but we just haven't gotten... Xerus, I guess, is one of the best we've found so far, but we haven't gotten too many systems that have a bunch of energy bonuses. Okay, so new colonies start with one additional pop. Starbase upkeep reduced by 20%. Empire sprawl from systems and colonies is reduced by 25%. Let's go ahead and reduce Starbase upkeep. That'll have an immediate impact on our current problem, which will help us bring in more minerals. Nice. There goes the shortage. Okay, so with that... We now have some important decisions to make. Let's see which station would be the most... Okay, a Jaundice 5 is a very efficient choice because it's 4 in 1. Ooh, Iriani 5 is actually 6 in 1. I wasn't expecting that. I was not expecting that. 
What about Radafi? Oh, okay, so never mind. This is not, not only is it not first place, it's not second place. Radafi and Iriani need to be some of the first. All right, these are two threes. That's more along the lines of what I was expecting to see. Okay, fantastic. Here's what we're going to do. We already have a construction ship here, so let's go ahead and build a mining station there. And we'll leave it at that for now, but that'll bring in a good amount of additional minerals. And yes, I know that did just take away more minerals. <laughs> Although what I can do now is I can buy like this. So I can finally build on Nazaroth. So the question was, you know, do I go ahead and build a mining district even though there's not a pop yet that can work this? There are still three available jobs, in fact. Or hmm. Our construction is complete. I've already built two research labs, two alloy foundries, and two synaptic nodes. It may be time just to build a hive warren. Yeah, let's just do that. We already have one, but this second one will resolve the housing issue and ensure that the planet continues to remain in good found an anomaly. health, I suppose. There is movement in the upper atmosphere of Saya 1, as though a ship was gliding... I really wish this would appear to the side like the rest. As though a ship was gliding hurriedly through the clouds. I need to look for a mod that moves the anomalies to the side, too. Because the events move to the side, but the anomalies don't. And I just... I want to be able to just zoom straight to... See, when you open up a station interface, it pops up over here. Which is, I feel like, what it should be. And I don't think that this is the result of the mod that I'm using, although it might be. It's just, I want to keep things clear from the center of the screen, you know? The searcher unit has located the source of the movement in the upper atmosphere of Saya 1. Surprisingly, there was no ship hidden in the clouds, but rather a young space amoeba, its mother nowhere to be seen. There is no way of knowing how this juvenile was separated from its mother or others of its kind, but one thing is certain. It appears to have imprinted on the searcher unit. As the crew completed their survey of Saya 1, they found that the amoeba was following them. It has proven difficult to shake, and Motile Organ 74 has taken quite a shine to the youngster's determination. Our science officer suggests allowing the juvenile to follow the vessel, certain we may learn more about space meters in the process. <laughs> we can certainly study it. Order dissection. So, I feel like the voices... I feel like this is what they would do, as much as it hurts. We've adopted the juvenile in two other playthroughs so far. I'm going to order a dissection. All right, so we need a fleet with at least 90 power. That can be easily done. All right, so we are going to move this fleet away from its home station, which means we're going to get a bit of an energy shortage again. But it's okay. All right, we have a science ship that's done up here. Why don't we go ahead and just put you on... We do have you, though, now that I'm thinking about it. I'll tell you what, why don't you come down... Do we have a scientist that actually has... No, we don't have anything in terms of expertise with... Um, Archaeological sites. So you head down to Absajamin. Take care of that archaeological site, please, and thanks. Oh, hey, we're ready for another system. That was fast. Oh, that's right. We need Mira first. Just kidding. You just moved to Trappist. We'll be taking Trappist soon. That's a number of colony opportunities. And we are at a point where we can build an additional colony ship, so... Hold that thought. A surface scan of Sigma Draconis 1 has identified the remnants of an ancient installation on this planet's surface. Most of the facility was wiped out in a massive explosion some two million years ago, but a few outlying buildings more or less survived the blast. All evidence recovered so far points towards this having been some sort of research base built by the first leader. Cool. So we're discovering more and more about the previous cycle during which the voices were around, but they don't seem to recall much. Let's put it that way for narrative purposes. So they're learning about their current past. All right, so either this 19 slot, which has no rare resources, or this 14 slot, which has no rare resources. Ruthari doesn't have any rare resources either, nor do any of these, interestingly enough. Although we have to terraform those. Let's have a look at Trappists. Wow. Nothing. Nothing at all. Okay, so I think we're going to go with the 19 slot as a start, especially because it's tropical, and that makes it 100% habitable for us. Let us colonize using the voices, and this is going to be, so far we've called them appropriations. This is an Ebonar. It's 
extension Hemi. <laughs> Let's call this the Zion Obtainment. All right, so we've got a starbase building here. And then we'll be able to build a station in Xeris. Which will help with Our the energy situation. Completes. Go ahead and do that. I would like to build in Trappist, but first we need that energy in Xeris. An odd factor. A group of investigators have found a hidden factory on Jollet appropriation. The building in its state of decay tells of an old civilization, one that excelled at constructing things that stood the test of time. Our population would easily be able to use the facility to add to the colony's production output. Interesting. So now we have the odd factory, which can lead to some interesting results. Impressive structures litter a small area of the service on Rasnum 1, practically begging for some archaeological work. Look into that, please. Oh, look at the space meter. <laughs> Little tiny juvenile. Oh, wow, he is tiny. He's so small. He's so small. I don't remember ever being that tiny. Did they change that model to where there's... That's so cool. I now feel worse about dissecting him, which we're about to do. The archaeological expedition we sent to Sigma Draconis 1 has returned. Very little remained of the First League research base they were sent to investigate. But, judging by its isolated location, we suspect that the research conducted there was of a dangerous nature, possibly involving dimensional travel or advanced bioweapons. A recovered data disc from the Academy of Sciences has offered some insights into how the scientific community of the First League was organized. An interesting find. Okay, so for whatever reason, the fleet has stopped moving. That's kind of annoying. You were given an order to conduct this research project, so do it, please. I'll have to keep an eye on them. All right, we're already looking at that anomaly. Very good. So let's close that out. The structure, structures on Rasnum 1 are not as old as we first believed. It seems to be a playground or an amusement park of some sort. Science Officer Motel Organ 74 notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations that we can learn much from, and that to the builder's alien eyes, this might have been a cutting-edge sensor array, or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless to us voices, it looks mostly like a place where you, you would take your young and let them amuse themselves. Again, lots of boosts to research so far this episode. Our construction is complete. Which I cannot complain about. All right, let's definitely build those mining stations. Jollet Appropriation is ready for its first building. We will absolutely build a generator district and finally start to see that shortage Technology go away. Conceived. What do we have here? Good. So we now know how to clear that tile blocker. I don't think it's quite time for xenobiology yet. However. Hmm decisions. Naval cap? Hmm. I think hive nexus, really. Or perhaps regenerative hull tissue. That option's always going to be there, though. Let's go for the hive nexus while well, we've got the option. It'll un unlock some additional options beyond that as well, so it'll help in a couple of different ways. We have surveyed the system. <laughs> Trying to get a sense of where my ships currently are. Technology conceived. Okay, so let's build these two mining stations. Mining station output has improved by another 10%. Very good. So we can get minerals from miners plus 20%, but again, that's going to stay there too. So why don't I go ahead and just improve... You know, let's go ahead and build afterburners, because we can put those on ships and make all of our ships a little bit faster. Get that taken care of. Oh man. See now, now we have a proper amount of energy income, and we're not even done with the generator district yet. So shortage resolved. Okay, you keep uh, oh, it's when they jump. That's what it is. It's when they jump to another system. Because he's following this ship around. Cute little guy. Our construction. I'm kinda sorry we're about to dissect you. Kind of. Sort of. Do we have destroyers yet? No, we don't. I do want to bomb the crap out of these guys. Possibly enslave them. We'll see. But we're not going to put up with their continued presence for much longer. Okay. An abandoned ship has been left to drift aimlessly above this moon. The massive sails protruding from its hull suggested that it relied on solar power to function. Look into that. That'll give us some engineering research as well. Still down on housing here. Even after building the Hive Warren. 
Yeah, I'm gonna do the thing where I build another generator district, even though there's not a job quite ready yet. There's not a pop, rather. That's what I should really say. There's not a pop ready to take it. It will be okay. All right, so now is the time to start building some of these other structures. Juvenile amoeba dissection. The dissection of the amoeba juvenile has completed while large portions of the body were destroyed during the creature's pacification. Xenobiological analysis of the remains have revealed remarkable regenerative qualities. So this actually completed the rest of regenerative old tissue. Simply put, the creature regenerates not only via cell replication, but with the assistance of a silicon-based bacteria that reconstructs organic tissue. With some modifications to this bacteria's genetic, genetic information, we could potentially harness its regenerative capacity in order to devise a self-repairing whole matrix. Gradual, though the process may be. Technology Here we go. So we didn't even have to research that. Cool. Solar Sailor. We have discovered an abandoned solar sail ship in orbit around Saya 2C. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. One of the massive sails has a large tear where some kind of object passed through, most likely a meteoroid which appears to have disabled the vessel. Although the technology of the ship is severely outdated, it does possess some interesting engineering design choices. An interesting, albeit primitive, design. We have found an anomaly. There are signs of, an, of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on in the, in the vicinity of this gas giant. Research it, please. That's 150 days, and that will give us another artifact. Quite nice. I'm going to pause for a moment. Yeah, so we've got regenerative hold issue. We don't actually have to make a new technology choice because we don't actually have a new technology choice. Let's bring the function throng back so that we aren't suffering as much from having them out in the field. The Vropok homeworld. Trappist 4 was the homeworld of the Asian Vropok, a species that was among the founding members of the ancient First League. These flightless bird analogs walked on long, spindly legs, and fossilized remains suggest that their females could reach heights up to 4 meters while males were slightly smaller. All of their cities were built inside hollowed-out mesas. Scans indicate that, the, that some of these mesas were artificially constructed, presumably by the Vropok themselves, after they ran out of natural candidates to build new cities within. Situation is so let's go ahead and have that science ship look into that. It's kind of cool. I can't remember ever getting that event before as part of the First League's change, so they might have added some new possibilities. I really like that. Okay, well, we're about 28 minutes into this episode, so I'm going to stop here, and let me potentially give a few more orders really quickly. Yeah, Heika's not really a candidate. A Jaundice is. Gozum isn't. I'm just looking for which stations I definitely need to build first. Yeah, you can go ahead and build that. Oh, it's not within our borders yet, but it can be. So let's give that order. Build a Starbase and Trappist, and then we'll have that research station built. Those research stations are already queued up. And I will go ahead and give the order to build that mining station in a jaundice. Okay, next episode, we're going to continue to resolve the energy shortage and get some more colonies going because we have some opportunities. And it is going to be time after that to turn around and see what's going on in Seoul. There are some aggressive space amoeba hunters still in the area. So we're going to need to build up our fleet a little bit more, possibly get destroyers research before that happens. But that's going to be our next priority because I'm really curious to see at what state of development humanity currently is. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 4 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.